Um, so I have to begin with an apology. Uh, this has been on my, well, the conference has existed as a, as a conference for about maybe eight weeks or something like that, and it's been on my calendar that whole time. But one of the challenges of being provost is that um, you wake up every day and discover that something went wrong and um, you have to run and fix it. So I was uh, unable to attend part of yesterday and then unable to, uh, I was here for the morning then had to leave to help address another matter. Um, and the, you know it'll be successful if you don't hear about it. So um, that's always my ambition. <laughs> so I want to begin with that apology for only being able to be here for maybe about just less than half of the conference. Um, but that apology uh, aside, um, I want to begin really with thanks. I want to thank Charles E. Don for his vision and philanthropy. I want to express my appreciation for everybody who works so hard and in a small window in terms of academic conference planning to pull off this extraordinary event with an A-list of people coming to visit us, with representatives from so many institutions, public and private, from so many different countries as well. It is nothing short of remarkable what has just happened. And of course, I want to congratulate the Idan laureates. Their hard work and their vision elevates us all. I missed Larry in his talk yesterday, but had the pleasure of being present for Wendy Cops. And this morning, it was a delight, even when it was a challenge, to hear, about, to hear Anant uh, share his story and his vision. Now, I use the word challenge very intentionally. As a traditional, stand in front of a room historian and a bricks and mortar administrator, there are a number of ideas that Anant advanced that made me uncomfortable. I cannot stand before you, after all, as the chief academic officer of a major research university, content to make declarations that my way is correct because that's how things are and have been. I can't be content for two reasons. One, to declare something has value without being able to prove its value leads one quickly to arrogance and obsolescence. Two, I can't declare something has value simply because it's the way it's always been. Because that declaration takes us very quickly to a place where we have to be comfortable in our own amnesia. It was not that long ago where women, blacks, Jews, other ethnic groups, other minorities, not that women are a minority, of course, were denied entry to our most elite institutions. Amnesia allows us to ignore that we are not far removed from the legalized segregation in this country of primary and secondary schools, public schools. Amnesia allows us to ignore that these battles continued into my lifetime. And a very quick aside, I discovered doing some research a few years ago that my, I'm the youngest of three, that the three siblings, my two siblings and I, would have been the desegregation case for Montgomery Academy in 1974, uh, an elite institution grown out of um, Brown versus Board, reaction to Brown versus Board of Education. This is in our lifetime. And critically, amnesia allows us to ignore how we are still living with these challenges and the heartbreaking consequences today. Pick up a newspaper, go online, figure out what school you want to take your kid to. You understand this. So for these reasons, I'm happy to be challenged and to know that this whole conference represents a gathering of scholars, teachers, tech entrepreneurs, and innovators who together are asking and trying to answer uncomfortable questions. It's the only way we're going to get answers. Further, I am so pleased that the Idan Prize Conference has given us the opportunity for people from so many different kinds of backgrounds to come together because it represents a powerful reminder that an interdis interdisciplinary approach in thinking and that a reminder of when worlds of theory and applied knowledge come together, that that is a very special place where we have the greatest chance to find the answers to the difficult questions that are barreling toward us. Pick the keyword, technology, cognition, artificial intelligence, socialization. Think about the hyper complex and dynamic environments where we are forced to um, to ask difficult and fundamental questions about bias, diversity, 
that big loaded term normative, socioeconomic differences, language and cultural barriers, the list goes on. Bringing together people from very different sensibilities, different modalities, different methodologies, different agendas increases the chance dramatically. We know this, that we will find the answers we need. Now, as a child and grandchild of primary school educators, as the child, grandchild, and great-grandchild of college educators and administrators, you might say that I am the preacher and the choir in this instance. And perhaps that's true. But you all are part of the large, larger choir, this large and complex choir also. And because of Larry Hedge's work, because of Anant Argawal's work, and because of Charles E. Don's vision, we are moving closer to something we might call harmony. It will take time, it will take resources, of course. But if we don't invest both our time and our resources, the consequences are enormous. And you all know what is in the balance. Human rights, health, safety, environmental sustainability, economic opportunities, our humanity. Thank you all for coming to Northwestern. Thank you for your commitment to these large and complex issues. Thank you for being determined to make our world a better place. Thank you all very much.